It's taken a long while to admit to myself that I'm actually afraid. And it took a long while after that to convince myself that it's not only okay, but healthy to feel afraid. It's in human nature to fear what is unknown. The unknown can be terrifying precisely because we don't know what's waiting for us beyond the comforting light of the home fire in that stretch of darkness. What is that thing with the yellow eyes blinking at us in the light? Maybe it's nothing. Or maybe it's something. Maybe it's a something that has very big and very sharp teeth. The more primitive centers of our brain developed fear as a warning signal. A wake-up call that something isn't right. And in times of danger, it would be foolish to ignore the fear. Fear can keep you alive. But fear, on the other hand, can also leave you trapped. Among the battery of my mental health struggles, I've suffered from anxiety for years. Even though I wasn't diagnosed with anxiety until I was 29, I distinctly remember how, when I was 14, I was so petrified to read my history essay in front of a high school class of 20 other kids that my teacher had to deliver the presentation for me. I remember how I trembled in front of their collective gaze, barely able to squeak out a single sentence, mortified at my own frailty on such a minor issue as talking to my fellow students. Needless to say, it doesn't surprise me at all to find that Psychology Today reports that glossophobia, the fear of public speaking, is experienced by as many as one in four people during their lifetime. And even a mild form of that fear can be devastating for those seeking to, say, advance their careers, or maybe start a YouTube channel. In my case, it's a little of column A and a little of column B. But I'm not really here to talk about the animal brain origins of fear. We know it exists, even why it exists, at least in theory. Why does fear strike even when we're clearly not in mortal danger? We're fairly thinking rational human beings, contrary to what a glance through Twitter might tell you, and we made it to the apex of the predator list because of our big powerful brains. So what gives? Why do some things strike fear into our hearts? I don't know about you personally, but for me, I am at heart a perfectionist, and that is my Achilles heel. A perfectionist fears failing, fears falling from grace in the eyes of the public. A perfectionist fears the imperfection in themselves. And yes, I've watched Passion of the Nerds, The Toolbox Fallacy, and Roberto Blake's make a hundred crappy YouTube videos until my eyes cross and I can mouth each word with the same exact timing. Don't get me wrong, they're both honestly brilliant, inspiring videos, and I'll link them down in the description for you. But though I know each video by heart now, I still hesitate. The truth is, I am a perfectionist. I am... I am afraid to fail. But oddly enough, failure isn't a stranger to me. I've failed before, and I'm sure I'll faceplant again in the future. In fact, I'm counting on it. I expect it. Hell, if I was worried about the occasional bruise to my bones or pride, I wouldn't have spent my time as a kid scaling up trees in the frou-frou dresses my mother made me wear, or hanging by my knees upside down on the monkey bars in my Oshkosh and pigtails. So obviously that's not enough to change how my mind works. Because at the end of the day, it isn't simply failure that is the boggart that haunts my closet. Because failure isn't just failure, according to my perfectionist brain. It's just another word for not good enough. And there's quite a difference. It's not the fall that breaks you. It's the embarrassment of doing so in public. Maybe that's why public speaking is such a nightmare for so many of us. Not the failure to convey your meaning effectively, but the fact that you will be judged as not good enough, as not worthy in the eyes of those who you're trying so hard to impress. Last year, I released my debut novel. For a brief while, it sold copies and I was thrilled. But when the sales staggered and then dropped off in the following months, my mood dropped with them. I had worked so hard on that book, I had devoted a whopping 12 years of my life to it. I had worked hard, and, but for a few dozen precious readers, it was largely ignored. In theory, I had expected it, 
I knew self-publishing was a gamble, knew that 9 out of 10 times most self-published authors were lucky to sell even a single copy to their mothers. And I had certainly succeeded beyond that. I just hadn't done as well as other self-published authors apparently have, some claiming thousands of copies sold and reaching the top tiers of Amazon's independent publishers list. I had compared myself to others and found myself wanting. I thought myself lesser because I didn't reach the top of that proverbial Everest on my first run, 12 years of experience or no. And yet, I had made it to the summit when so many didn't even bother to try because it's too hard. Hubris had claimed another victim as I nursed my wounded pride. And now I hesitate to even really try with my YouTube channel. Partly because I still have yet to find my voice in this visual medium, or what I want this channel to be. Something that can only be possible through trial and error, through time and experimentation. But also because I'm afraid I'm not good enough. I want a certain measure of success, enough to feed my family, enough to not have to live from paycheck to paycheck. And I'm afraid the world will judge me as not deserving of it. There's something freeing in admitting you're afraid. Of embracing the unknown, anticipating the fall, the broken bones, and the bruised ego. But that first step is always a doozy. But in a world of people who are too afraid to try, maybe there's comfort in the words of Elizabeth Kenny. It's better to be a lion for a day than a sheep all your life. Back in high school, when I realized my fear of public speaking needed to be overcome, I took a drama class to get used to having people look at me. And here and now, I find myself starting that class all over again. But the drama class helped me find my voice, helped me become more confident when face to face in a relatively small group of people. Enough to voice my opinions in public, even while fearing the end result of having my voice heard. And maybe, just maybe, this channel will help me become more confident in my art, too. That whether I have 10 listeners or 10,000, I am still being heard. Fear is not going to kill you. The fall is not going to destroy you, even if it feels like it will. In the end, you are stronger than your fear. So noose your wounds, but then get up and go back to the drawing board. The only thing you should fear is never bothering to try.